Welcome to welcome. <laughs> welcome to between between two drills, right? That's what our podcast is supposed to. Between two drills and a bottle of peanut. A tea and a bass guitar. <laughs> I'm Nikki. Who are you? I'm Pat. Daniel. Hello. And uh, we don't have any topics yet. So we have a list of questions regarding root setting because we three are root setters. Uh, yeah, when we are allowed to do some setting right now, everything is shut down here in Germany and I think in Australia as well. So are you ready to get into some easy, basic questions about root setting too? Yeah. Yeah. Let's start it. Okay. Who doesn't want to hear, you know, 30 year old white men talk about stuff. <laughs> most of TV these days. <laughs> okay. The first question is. How long have you been setting pet exotic starts? I can't actually remember. I think it's been like nine years, maybe. I've definitely been at uh, Urban Climb for close to 10 years. But I think there was a period when I started where I was just doing like desk um, instructing shifts. But pretty soon I started like, brushing holds, um, just like cleaning holds for the setter who was working at the gym. And pretty soon after that, I kind of started doing like rope setting just with like a T-bar, really basic stuff. So yeah, I'd like round it to about nine years, maybe. And you then? Nine years, 36 days. <laughs> Did you wrote same, that down? Same, same story as Pat. I came with prep dances. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have, actually have a distinct memory of Dan uh, coming in in the morning while we were all sitting around brushing holds clean. He comes in because he had just finished a shift at the bakery and he brings in a bag of like Danishes, croissants, all kinds mm. of like baked goods. Oh, mm. it was it was a good time to be alive. 500 people. Yeah, there was like three of us. <laughs> so, so you started stripping and brushing as, as well. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think I yeah. started, I don't know, when I was 14 or 15. Initially, I started stripping walls when I was 11 or 12 because we had a competition once a year and I always had a drill. Like my father gave me a drill to strip one of the ball ring uh, walls and this drill. I think with a cable attached to it, it always hit me in my face. That's like my first memory of doing anything with holes. <laughs> nice. yeah. so you, started, you started at your father's gym? Yeah, yeah, at my family gym. So I think they opened the gym in 99. So that was when I was 10 or 11. And we, had a, we hosted an annual bouldering competition and I was always allowed to help stripping all the holes. And then on Monday, I was allowed to skip school and help like putting holes back onto the wall. That was cool. Nice. Yeah, school is awesome. for losers. <laughs> yeah, there's people that finished school. Look at them now. Uh, they have to do a home office. Poor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're home officing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how we so start. You... So Nikki, so you were like, you were basically like forced into setting. <laughs> like your dad just like gave you a drill and was like, here, yeah, like make yourself useful. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. But uh, he was born in it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get out of the climbing industry and out of the climbing gyms, but once I discovered university and like how exhausting and tiring like learning and reading books is. Uh and that you don't make any money with it, I got back to mm. setting. So I started setting with 14 or 15 for this competition. And then later I got asked by other gyms to set at their gym. And uh, then I made money and at university I was like, yeah, I don't earn any money here. I need money to live. So setting it is. Yeah. When was it for you that you, uh, that you knew that it is your, like, your lifetime purpose job? 
I think there was a while. Sorry, I assumed you meant me. Yeah. Were you directing at me? But Dan is enjoying his tea. Um, <laughs> you don't know that. I think there was a there was a period where I was like working at the gym um, and setting uh, just like very very occasionally. It was like a couple of hours uh, before you started your like desk shift. Mm. Um, and at that time, I was going to university as well, studying multimedia, so learning how to do video editing, photography, uh, some marketing type stuff. Um, and I guess the plan at the time was like, yeah, like work at the gym, get a uni degree, and then get a real job. Um, and sort of towards like towards the end of the degree, I was working at the gym a lot, and I just like really enjoyed climbing like I fell in love with the whole climbing scene and climbing community and um I was kind of like well I could go back and finish my degree in this last semester or I could just take all the skills that I learned for the past three years and do them at the gym and um yeah I just never went back to university (laughs) I think I had like put in a deferral which is like you delay your your semester and that was uh, like six years, seven years ago. So, oh, yeah. Good. What about you, Dan? Did you go to university or anything yeah, else? Yeah, like, again, it's the same story. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for going first, Pat. <laughs> Went to uni, worked at the gym, deferred uni, been climbing a lot, worked at the gym <laughs> part-time then full time, mostly coaching and root setting, and then just root setting as we got bigger. What was it about yeah. setting particularly that you just thought was like super interesting? Um, like why like, not do as much coaching or like other parts of the, the gym responsibility? Well, I, I did. At one point I was heading the, like all the maintenance, all the coaching, all of the setting and then as we grew um yeah we needed to split those jobs up in the gym and um uh it's just like one of these godfather scenes where the head of the family's like nah you're gonna set boy we're gonna get him michael he's gonna be the head coach <laughs> and blakey he's gonna be in charge of the rope from now on you do as you're told like It was kind of, it's a bit like that. Um, But I think a lot because I had to pick one of those three things and the root setting was the one that um, I found the most interesting. So I thought I was actually given the opportunity to pick whatever I wanted to continue with. And then we found a new head coach and um, yeah, found a way to have someone in charge of the maintenance too, which was all of like a, I guess a response to us getting bigger at first in gyms, you start as like a, you say, jack of all trades, doing a bit of everything. And then as we got two facilities, three facilities, four, like you have to start specializing a lot more. So now all we do is root set. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mo money, mo problems, you know? Literally, more bowlers. Oh, man. That's the, yeah, that's the journey. What's the next question, Nikki? I love these questions. Now the next question is, uh, I don't know, wh- where did we get these questions from? May uh, send it to us? Uh, yeah, so one of the Victorian setters at um, Climb May wrote up these, like, this epic list of questions. And uh, she was meant to be here for the first episode, but trying to organize, like, four people who are, you know, stuck at home 24-7, an hour like, away in our case. Hour nine or eight. Anyway, the next question is, what first sparked your interest in setting? Ooh. That's kind of what I asked, asked Dan. Maybe, Nikki, you can tell us what sparked your interest in it. He was forced into child labor. <laughs> okay, cool. I, 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 I honestly don't know. I, I think... Uh, I think it, for me, it was like, if those guys can do it, 
I can do it as well. Like, so a little bit of arrogance. And, oh, yeah, uh, cool. Ego. Ego. Uh, no, I, I, I honestly don't remember. Uh, I think Your um, heart is pure. <laughs> we are fine role models for the industry. So basically, oh, uh, money, uh, we got paid <laughs> to do a job, and ego. We were like, I was fuck a, that guy. I could do that better. I was Child a kid. Neighbor. And those guys were traveling for free and like staying at our house and was like, yeah, that's cool. They come and travel and go to another gym. They said like they attach these stones with the, with the ball onto the wall. Like I'm not really good when it comes to crafting, but I was like, okay, maybe a ball or one screw. I can do that. That's like all the crafting I can do. I can work with an anger grinder, but <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what's the first Who were they? Just, like uh, pikeys? Like they're just traveling through your town? <laughs> with with drills, drills and dogs and... Yeah, no, by... Dags. Dags. No, I think, Dags. I think I think there were some cool people, for example, like Banky came over to our gym like many, many times and I was a kid oh, and I was awesome. like, oh, this guy is cool because he's climbing everything in thongs. So he put like uh, all the... Um, all the final bowlers back onto the wall and he was like ah is it hard enough is it not so he just climbed all the f final bowlers in front of the audience again only in thongs and then the finalists came out and struggled and i was like oh that's cool that's a badass and uh, i i don't know i like the people and i think oh i don't know <laughs> adoration you loved the adoration yeah i never thought about so it i wanted money i wanted fame I wanted respect. That's why anyone gets into setting. <laughs> In the end, everyone sees like you don't get respect, you don't earn money, you don't get famous, but you quit your un university, so there's no way back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what first sparked your interest yeah. in setting? Yeah, it's too long ago. But the next one is interesting. What's your favorite brand of holes? <clears throat> That's a tough uh, one. Uh, I'm not going first on that one. <laughs> I think it's flat holds, probably for sure. Why? With this one, well, with this one brand, I can do mm. everything that I want to do in Ritz. And there's not many other brands you can say that. I think, uh, and they're beautiful. They have like a beautiful, uh, perfect mixture of function and aesthetics and their own unique look as well. And yeah. the lines are really long too, like the families. So if you're, I think something they did really well and only a few other brands have done well is um, they've taken an aesthetic and made it like a really, really, really long family, like hundred plus holds. So if you want to set in the same set of holds, you can have lots of different grips. Whereas like, I think still to now, Lots of times it's like these 10 holds look similar. So if you want to use them, but they're all like, like together, they're all jugs. Mm. Um, yeah, the, they made the families really long and really diverse. So yeah, so uh, using like the damage control uh, comp three weeks ago on the Gold Coast and the variety you get just in this one line is slopers, nipples, like everything. What do you like think it. is more, more important, nippled holes or slopers? Nipples, for sure. Yeah, for competitions, absolutely. If I screwed a dual texture nipple onto a bigger dual texture last year, and yeah, it split the field, so I can vouch for that. <laughs> we need to find a, find a graphic of that problem to insert. <laughs> Yeah, you're national. gonna have like you should uh, spend some time and add photos and videos over the top of our uh, yeah. Nikki. Let's do that. We just put cool. stuff over here. Yeah, yeah. At least yeah. I'm having a hold here. Yeah, here, here's a flat hold. Oh, ah, yeah. Answer. Hey, is that that? That's, that's baby a, trash. Yeah, that's the one you gave me. That's straight out of Milton. It's just polished. Yeah, you see that? Out of Milton. No, mm. no texture now. Yeah, that's no texture. Ah. But but you see this stamp. That's quality. where they got the idea from. Quality control. <laughs> That's flat hole. Uh, yeah. It was controlled. It doesn't mean that it was good. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I don't have a favorite brand of holes. I think there's definitely, definitely like brands that I gravitate purpose. towards where I know that like I'm gonna get uh I think like what Dan was saying, like a good mix of like aesthetic and functional holds. I think for me it's like I don't know, Cheetah and Flat Hold are like two brands that I very often um kind of toss up as like my favorite. I think Cheetah just has a lot of like really comfortable functional shapes that I really like working with. But mm. yeah, same thing. Flat hold is just like yeah, really just classy. Really nice, functional, clean. Mm. Yeah, both are very good. Yeah. For me it's like it really depends on what kind of style and which difficulty. I love like setting easy or basic stuff with like classic lines like lapis and bluestone or squadron axes, flat holes as well. I think for me it's more or less about like which holes I don't like. That's HRT and Voltopia stuff. <laughs> Tell that for sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a favorite. Sorry. Throwing some shade. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do the next one? If you, um, well, staying on the hold topic, if you, yeah. if you were a climbing hold, if you were one shape, if you had to turn yourself into one shape, what climbing shape or like what hold uh, would you be? So not like, not like a grip type, like an actual specific hold. Ah, okay. I'd be uh, the flat hold banana. You know, like the uh, the huge one, superstar or revival, the really uh, slopey. The slopey one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yes. Because I feel that no one cannot touch this hole in a gentle way, and you you always have to feel. Always <laughs> <laughs> have to slap it. If I'm a hold, I want to be loved, and I want to be get touched gently and slowly and soft and I want to be used multiple times only if I'm a hold <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool nice <laughs> cool and you what about you Dan yeah that's a tough one I think at the moment um damage control 26.22 hold number four which has <laughs> No, t no texture would be a good hold to be because like there's nothing you can hold so in the current climate it's probably the safest hold to be in the world really um for social distance <laughs> purposes um but i always really i love that you were able to list the exact model number of the hold look i came prepped i read the questions so you know some of us <laughs> professional. um I really like the Schmarotzer as well. It's like that's a, right. Yeah, you you have been a fan of the Schmarotzer for a while. <laughs> not that one. <laughs> that's the baby trip. Um, just purely for the name, no other reason. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> word. Yeah. You know what it means, Schmarotzer? Well, leave the p customer, the people watching at home, like they can find out. Yeah, I know what it means, but they should all look it up. It's fantastic. And you, Padre? Uh, I think for me, I would have to say the Flathold Superstar uh, 02.03. You just want to be comfy. Yeah, that's, the, uh, that's one of the smaller dishes. It's the one that isn't like super, super round in its uh, group profile. It's like a bit more of a elongated like scoop. I just like every time I use this hold. Yeah, it's just like it's such a great hold, and it's so versatile. You can put it on like a steep profile, um, on a volume, or just on the wall, and it's like really challenging. On a vertical face, it's like nice for medium grade boulders. Um, yeah, it's just it's just so versatile and so comfy, and uh, it's really easy to work with. Like me. It's yeah. popular hold. Popular. Mm. We can use it on every angle. Yeah, everyone loves it. <laughs> and it's the right size. It fits into yeah. space as well. Right. That's true. I don't fit into all into all spaces. Are we still talking about the hold? 
No, yeah, like we are the holes. I'm the banana. I don't fit in, onto all angles. I'm more like yeah, you are a banana. Uh, more like the slabby guy, maybe on an arete. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> it's good. I don't fit onto any volumes. Yeah, I'm complicated. <laughs> any other questions regarding <laughs> regarding holes? Probably. There's one I prepared earlier. Oh. Beaujolais. <laughs> I should get oh. a wine for the next episode. But finish, it's... finish your tea, and you're on the wine. Nice. Nice. We've just, do what you want. I've just, I've just ran dry. There's the mm. one I'm thing in, in Australia in the lockdown, they will never close the bottle shop. <laughs> never closes down. There's the bottle shops. It's probably the most essential service. Yeah, do you also have like big lines standing in front of it and waiting and like uh, two meters apart or? No, no it's not no, like, because no, really. they're all still open, like they're not, yeah. No one's panic no, buying. No okay. queues. And it's, it's like booze is a thing where you do one shop and you fill up a trolley and you know, it's, <laughs> it's not like fruit where you have to go every couple of days. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, the next one is good, I think. The best profile to set on. Yeah. Interesting. Like, uh, whoo. The best profile to set on. Reds. Just like in general, uh, reds. I would, I'd say reds. Yeah. Just well, a reds is yeah. like cheating, basically. <laughs> Why? Yeah, it's like the profile, profile and, uh, does half the work for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun. It's easy. It's great. It's like pure dopamine, like really quickly. You just put one jib on any arete and you've got a five star problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's very satisfying. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah. take I'll take it every time with the arete cheat. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah, double so arete can be fun. So, so do you think uh, I have to uh, pick something else? No. I think I think uh, to like expand on on that answer a bit as well. Maybe if I had to choose like a a wall angle, mm. like say you don't have a, a particular profile, you just have like a wall angle, mm. fifteen to twenty degree overhang is like, or well, maybe fifteen is a bit. Let's say 20 degrees. Mm -hmm. It's probably like my dream angle of an overhang. Because it's like at that angle where you can do kind of delicate stuff with volumes or you can like build out the steepness, make it harder. It's just mm -hmm. a really good angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, angles is probably a better one. I I'd take three degrees slab. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Just like uh, the amount that you can do balancey stuff, but you can still force like many many moves even quick moves and uh started quick and then slow it down really balancey really frustrating there's a lot of potential in there yeah, yeah yeah and it's also like you can climb it for a long time until you're like 70 plus maybe 80 years old you can still climb a climb a slab of three degrees that's my goal yeah nice. oh my turn uh yeah, either of those feel pretty good. I think. Cool. Good. Ten, ten to twenty degrees. Good contribution, Dad. Well, yeah, like I mean, what can I add? Ten to twenty <laughs> degrees and three degree slab is the two best angles. Uh, yeah. It's where you want to be. I yeah. think twenty is getting hard to build out back to vertical, from what I've experienced. Like you need some big stuff. Mm. to get it back to vertical but yeah like 10 is really yeah you can make them climb a go in and out and yeah you can make all your jumps really nicely too yeah that's all your true. fancy boy jumps uh should we do one more question do one more question favorite setting snack Ooh. Yeah, that's a good last question. Favorite setting snack. Cigarettes. For Nikki. 
Yeah, from time to time, but usually... In, cigarettes, in the, Red Bull? In the past. <laughs> yeah, I got really used to, to drink like cappuccino and flat whites if uh, there's a good barista at the gym. Just because of you guys, because once I came back to Germany, I started drinking coffee again and flat white it is. So that would be my favorite snack. Yeah, I think coffee goes without saying. I don't know. Sugar. Basically just raw sugar. Yeah, raw sugars. Sugar is so good. Sugar is really good. And then? I'm gonna go with something that I want to become my future favorite snack, <laughs> which I had in Studio Block last year. Flaumkuchen. <laughs> Flaumkuchen. Oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Everyone at home, look it up. What is what is that for those of us who don't know? <laughs> it's not pizza. That's what I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's delicious. It's they not it. German for pizza. <laughs> That's right. No matter, maybe you thought that it was German for pizza. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> it's a Flammkuchen. And uh, t apparently it's from where Tommy Krauss is from uh, in the southwest of Germany. It's this delicious, like, crispy base, like a pizza. And it's got cheese on it, like a pizza. And um, other toppings. Sounds on it, like you're describing a pizza, Dad. <laughs> No, it's a Flammkuchen. But anyway, it's delicious. They had uh, the classic one at um, Studio Block, which was like ham and sour cream and cheese and Usen base. And they brought it out to me and it was really good. So I want to see more of that in Australia over the next few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. tries to just get a McCain's pizza and dress it up as a Flammkuchen. I'll be on to them because I've had the real deal now. <laughs> Do you like brezel? Brezel. Yes. Brezel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that is a that's a good point. That's a good setting snack. Mm. Also a good snack. Like... Yeah, really good. Basically, any food. Bit of oh. cheese. Oh, cheese. <laughs> any bread-based food with a bit of cheese and salt. <laughs> a cheese platter in a gym would be awesome. Cheese, some grapes. Oh my god. Some vino. Just like at 12. A bit of manchego. Oh. Yeah. Mm, manchego. Yeah, I have to get some good cheese for the next couple of days I'm staying inside. Oh, terrible. Okay. I think All right, well, I, that's, that's a pretty good place to end it. Yeah. So everyone goes out, get some cheese uh, and some wine. And uh, I think a we are all... Flammkuchen. <laughs> Uh, and I think we are open for more questions. Like we wrote down many, many questions here, like may compile this list. But if you out there have any questions, what kind of wine Dan is drinking or what kind of wine Pat was drinking. Or what uh, it's really nice. It's from just down the road. It's called the, uh, oh, it's all backwards. Ricketera. No, no, it, it's good here. Like I, I, It's like Flum, Flum, Flammkugeln in <laughs> German. What? What does it say? Bullets before? Bullets before cannonballs. I don't know what that means. That's the Smashing Pumpkins song, isn't it? I don't know. Okay, we'll Bullets look it up. With cannonballs. All right, Bullets play some Smashing Pumpkins to play us out, Nikki. Okay, uh, I'll try that. And uh, we will see each other, I think, next week. Play yeah. Along. yeah, Dan, give us the outro. Give us a Seinfeld uh, lick. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs>